What's going on YouTube? Team IGG checking in. We got Brandon, John Ayer, and Martin. And we're going to show you our own techniques or ways. Tips. Tips. We're going to show you our tips. Show you the tips and give you guys some cues or like just you know like how we do it. You know we're not going to make this like yes. uh, you know like a just something for you to take away to help your form out. Yeah, yeah, you know, but like our own way. You know, everybody does, you know, the, their own like traditional how-to video. You know, we're trying not to do that. We're just, we're just going to try to make things, you know, like from our perspective. So, Go ahead. first up, I'll start it off. So, my, my first initial thought when I step into the bar, I like to put my left foot forward. Um, since this is an actual deadlift bar, I like to be at the very end of the, the smooth part or at the beginning of the knurling. And I always like to keep the bar over my midfoot with my feet slightly pointed out. So my left foot first, make sure you're about midfoot. Right foot, same thing. Make sure you're about midfoot over the bar and toes slightly pointed out. And again, this is just me. And then from there, you know, I like to bend at the waist you know, keep your back and then find my hand position, which I like to be right on the edges of knurling, or about about half an inch or an inch over. So I use the switch grip. So just, just be like this, and then I like to sit there for a second and ponder about my life and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so and then and then from there, initially I would I would take take my breath, my breath in to brace. And then I would really emphasize my my lats, engaging my lats. And then that's when I would I would pull myself into the bar. Like people say that a lot, pulling yourself into the bar, which is a great cue. Definitely recommend it to anybody, you know, and any any kind of beginner or intermediate. I feel like, you know, that's I feel like that's like the same as like you you pulling a rubber band apart. You know, say this is a rubber band, you pull a rubber band apart and you got tension. You know, like, and so like that would be you pulling into the bar. You're you're creating that tension. You're creating that you know your, your tightness. Your everything's all wound up, ready to go. So it would kind of look like this. And I'm pulling myself into the bar. And that's about. I mean, that's pretty much about it. And then you know, from there, uh, my my hip to shoulder level is kind of varying at this point. Like. Can't really find the right spot yet without my hips shooting up. So um, I would like to rock back. So I like to, after I pull up on the bar, I like to rock back and the weight on my heels. And that's when I feel like I'll be in my best position. That's when I would feel like I'm tight. You know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to release that rubber band. So pulling yourself into the bar, it's gonna, it's gonna. Honestly, take like 30% out of the work of deadlifting. Mm -hmm. If you if you engage yourself super tight, all you gonna it's gonna be effortless, like halfway up your shins. It's because the bar's gonna want to come off the floor by itself, halfway up the halfway up your shins, and then all you gotta do is finish and lock it out. Yep. So for me, I'm a little different build. I got longer arms, shorter torso. He's got a long torso, long arms, so it's a little awkward for him. So I get about. You, you want to like you if you don't have a set deadlift stance, I would recommend starting somewhere like if you're gonna do like a jump, mm -hmm. like if you're gonna run up and like touch the rim on a basketball hoop. You pay attention to how you jump, and I'm about I'm about like right here, so I'll set up. I'm probably like an inch in on the knurling, and my point my toes slightly pointed out because I squat that way too. I squat with my toes out. It's not gonna be that aggressive, but you're gonna be just a little bit. So you just to get your hips through. So, I mean, I usually, competition form, I switch grip, but most of the time during training, I just do double overhand with straps or double overhand as much as I can <clears throat> before I need to use straps. So I'll just go with my switch grip right now. So I'm here, and then some, I like to roll it out. It let, helps me get my hips down further. So I'll show you how I roll it out. So I'm here. And I like to empty my stomach so it's not in the way when I try to try to, when I try to sit back. So I empty my stomach, and I'm 
I'm sitting back here, and then when I'm rolling forward towards me, and I'm halfway into my position, and I keep it, try to keep the bar as close to my shins as possible, and then I sit back into it, and you'll see right now, I'm gonna sit back, and you'll see the bar come off the ground. And that's half the work right there. So I'm gonna sit back into it. Just sit like you're gonna fall back, like you're trying to hold on to a, like if you're like trying to hold on to a rail, like you're like fucking tornado's gonna blow you away. So you hold on to it. Sit back. See, I'm not even doing anything, I'm just sitting back, putting my weight to counterbalancing the bar, and then just shoot straight up. We'll switch, we'll switch the angle from the side, but that's the one that's one cue that you can just practice. We got 135 on the bar. And just hold on to it in whatever stance you have, and then just sit far as back as you can, depending on your mobility and your build, and just see how see how far you can sit back until the bar shoots up for you. And then engaging your lats is key also. I like to think of it like if people it's hard for people to visualize it. It's like turning a doorknob. You grab the doorknob and you just go just a half a turn. Or, or another, another good example of that is like bending something. So right. Like, so imagine you have like a, a, a bar, like a, like a steel like bar, fucking a, a stick, and you're gonna break a stick. Right. The fir your first initial movement, you want to do this. You know, you want to you want to turn internally yeah. rotate your elbow, which in essence will automatically tighten your lat, automatically tightens your upper back. Like a good example, how Mark Bell says it is, like if somebody's trying to tickle your armpit and you're just you're just trying to stop them from trying to get their fingers yeah. in your armpit. Yep. That's pretty much what you gotta do. Yeah, so basically you wanna use your tricep and your lat to basically so, yep. kind of swallow. You just it. rotate your shoulders. Yep, so rotate back. No. Just rotate back as in you're popping your chest out for the ladies. Yep. And that's you're gonna be like this, and boom, and pop your chest yep. out. And that's how you should be. Upper back should be tight, everything should be tight, and then on, and then obviously the next one would be to brace, but all right, so I'm gonna show you my form from the side. Like I said, we're, everybody's different, uh, different build. So I would, I mean, I would say uh, rule of thumb is try to keep your back about a 45 degree angle. Might be a little bit uh, taller than that, might be a little bit lower than that. But I'm gonna show you what mine looks like, which is mine usually kind of looks like a 45. So same thing, I'm gonna just, I'll use my switch grip <clears throat> and line myself up. Empty your stomach, and when I mean empty your stomach, I, like for me, like I empty like, like you're heaving like, like all the way out. I'm empty, so I'm gonna fill it up. And then when you want, you have, and then also another thing, if you don't know how to breathe into a belt or just bracing in general, you might want to work on that too. We might do a video on that. So when I come up, when I'm rolling it back, that's when I'm taking it all in and then sitting back. So we go. And I'm coming back, I'm gonna breathe in. And I'm staying pretty tight. I'm getting pretty lightheaded right now, just doing it like that. So that's how you know you're gonna want, you're getting pretty tight, is when you're starting to fucking get red and starting to get pretty lightheaded. And then just same thing, the key, just sitting back in it. Just sit, sitting back in it, just practicing with 135 and you'll kind of get where you need to be. I'm, I, I start, I, uh, I engage pretty high, so that's all I need right there. And I'm not really, some people have to sit really deep into it. I'm, I'm not that mobile. So I'm just right there, I'm coming off the ground. So find your spot and that'll help you find your levers also. Another thing that Mark Bell says is you wanna keep your shoulders higher than your hips at all times. Because if, if your hips go up higher than your shoulders, Sir, you need to work on the hammies and a lot of things. <laughs> so, so again, we'll just run through it from the side view just so everyone can get a picture of it. So for me, I like to start the left foot forward. Again, bar over the midfoot, turn my foot slightly out. So then step up, slightly out. Next thing, bend, bend up the waist, then grab. And then from here, this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna take my breath, and initiate my lats. So here I'm gonna initiate my lats. So my upper back is tight, 
and then pull myself into the bar. Just like that. I'm not sure, not sure how my back looked on that, but it felt pretty good. Obviously, this is 135, so I mean it's a little harder to get to get into position with this weight because you know we can easily just pull it off the ground with our form. So that's that's my routine. That's kind of what's been working for me. I know I have a lot of things to work on, so I'm kind of adjusting things here and there. So we'll figure it out as we go. Thanks for watching.